Do so you think the Welsh people have been mistreated? Oh, disgusting. No support for the local people. Okay, That's mate. all you think we do is get pissed. What's life like in this town? Crap. Why do you... new. The best thing about it is a sunbed shop. <laughs> get yourself to a sunbed shop. I'm grateful of the work I've had. Still, I, if I was young growing up in the same environment now, I wouldn't be so, I don't think, so happy about it. It's, it's still my Neverville. It's quite a good community, mate. Welcome to the valleys of South Wales, a place where it seems to never stop raining. I've only just started out today and I'm already soaked through. But it's also a place that's synonymous with post-industrial decline. The closure of the mining pits and the steelworks like this one here at Ebu Vale have caused much deprivation in these communities that relied upon these industries for their prosperity. The steelworks here, or what's left of it, initially started being developed in the 1790s and by the 1930s was the largest steelworks in Europe. But by the 70s, much decline in the industry and closed in 2002. You can only imagine in these small valley communities what deprivation the loss of the main employer in the town would cause. Today, these valleys and the towns that lie in them very much seem like they've been left behind. Coming to the Valleys of Wales, I knew that I would need to find a local to show me around. And I found this guy sitting underneath the Welsh Dragon in the middle of town. How are you, mate? What's your name? Dale, man. Nice to meet you. You can show me what life is really like in this area. Yeah, I can show you, yeah. Yeah, the ups yeah. and downs. I can show you what I can, yeah. yeah. Yeah, and also I've heard that Merthyr Tydfil is the roughest town in this area, one of the roughest towns in Wales. Yeah, it is. Is this true? It, this is true, yeah, it is. It is up there, yeah. Yeah. Let's go and check it out. Let's go on. Let's go. Is the weather always this good in Wales, mate? <laughs> it fucking is, yeah. It is. It's always, it's always raining, it's always snowing. Even in the summertime, it's always raining. So, what's the story in Merthyr? What's Merthyr like? Rough. These days, rough. Rough, it is. It's... In what way? It's just a hard place to be in it, just like an old mining town. What's like the employment situation in town now that oh, like, the mines are closed and stuff? It's and... terrible, it is. Just... Dole town, isn't it? I'm a loony, loony Linda. Loony Linda. If they say, what's your name? Come. Lovely Linda, Loony Linda, or Mrs. Marmite. I, I get a bad temper when people drive like C-U-N-T-S's. Um, I, I get cross. So if I get any trouble in Merthyr, I've got to call for Loony Linda. Loony, yeah, because yeah, it's an English name. The men, the other day, a man was coming and said, oh, Loopy Linda, because I think Welsh is Loopy. But English is loony. Yeah, yeah. But I'd say I, loony. I, I call yeah. myself that. Oh, I like your yeah. ears. I'm yeah, you could put your finger through them. There you go. You just no have. one called me that. <laughs> I made it up. So you think the sense of community spirit's good, despite the it's the troubles that the community faces? I especially right in the roughneck council estates. It's yeah. mad. The nice yeah. areas. Neighbours don't even know neighbours. I always find that everywhere I go, yeah. the, the places where people struggle more, they have to rely on that community spirit. Oh, like yeah. Handsworth. Yeah, what, in Brum? Yeah, yeah Handsworth, that's a place. So what do you think of Merthyr as having like reputation of one of the roughest towns in Wales? Do you think it's fair? It can't, don't worry, it can't be rough. If you want a problem, you get a problem. But if you just want a, a nice... A nice time with decent people, you get that as well. It's, it, it depends on you, I suppose, isn't it? And even though, right, and I can say it's from experience, right, in the position I'm in, even though the majority of people around here have nothing, nothing themselves. They will go out their way to help you. And they're only going to know you. They will just go out their way to do something nice to you. And I, that just says everything that I need to know about this place anyway. Should we have a look at the, um, the Wyndham? Yeah. What's oh, the Wyndham? Well, the Wyndham, this, this is officially one of the roughest pubs in Britain. Okay. How, how did it get that title? Like who's, who's crowned it as one of the roughest yeah, pubs who, in Britain? Who crowned it? Who crowned it? was a guy back in the day, Malcolm Price. Hard oh, man. And they, they've written books about him. He used to wake up on the top to fight the Alsatians and I go home on a Friday night. Really? He's an animal of a man. And when's this? He was, oh, he's dead now, but... Uh, he'd have been like, like a grand, my grandfather's age sort of thing. Like, yeah, I mean? yeah. And, uh, you walk in, he chick your hand with his left hand and knock you out with his right. So Nathan, who I've just bumped into as we just got from the car park in Merthyr Tidfil, he said, Wendell, I've got to show you the roughest pub in Merthyr, possibly the roughest pub in Wales, and one of the supposed roughest pubs in Britain, and that is the Wyndham Arms. Let's go in and let's see what the regulars are like and what the pub's like in the Wyndham. What are you filming in for, mate? 
For YouTube, mate, yeah. Is it? Yeah. Good pub? I never beat you, mate. Ah, to be honest. Come on in. Shout out, Daddy, for that. So, so, how long have you run the pub? 14 years, isn't yeah. 14 years? Yeah. Oh, so you settled in it, didn't you? Well, I'm used to it, eh? Yeah. Hello, I sweetheart. I tell you, I have much more. <laughs> you got your hat on now, you're all good, I yeah? I never, I always got my hat So, what's, what's for Wyndham like as a pub? Sorry, man. Best beer in town. Best beer in town? Yeah. yeah. Best, and what's the price of a pint? Three pound ten at the moment. Okay. Nice. Three, three forty the export. No, I used to have a bad name, didn't I? The, it was on the toughest pub. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I've just come here today, and they're like, "We're going to show you the Wyndham. It's one of the toughest pubs around." Ah, but, it's but I've walked in, bollocks. and like I could walk in far posher pubs, and I wouldn't have had a welcome like this. Oh, Immediately, yeah. everyone's smiling at me. Yeah. No one's got a problem, but I've got my camera. Yeah, yeah. no, it's just yeah. all bullshit. Like. So, like um, a lot of the time, you see that like there's a reputation for these places, yeah. and when you come in, you see for yourself. And you see that there's real community and real people yeah, yeah, yeah. and it's friendly faces. Like, yeah. Years ago, you wouldn't get a seat up at nine in the morning, like. Yeah. So what time do you open? I don't get until ten now. Ten. Yeah. Ten, uh, yeah. Have a lot of light in You deserve but a light in, mate. It was full then. You know what I mean? All fifteen pinters. Yeah. I better pay for the bar a little. Uh, oh, you you, you better pay for the beer, mate. Yeah. There's the prices, folks. Oh, 68. Shall we get it? Yeah, maybe 160. And the dog will pour a pint for you, mate. So here you go, folks. This is one of the roughest pubs, supposedly, in Wales, possibly in Britain. To me, it looks all right. Best six pack in the world. Take your top off, then. Eh? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Who knows Or is it you? <laughs> look at, hey, look at this. Best six pack in the world. Fuck Peter Andre. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So why is everyone drinking cans? Ah, uh, that's it. That's cheaper. Cheaper than the draft? Yeah. But the draft's still good, yeah? Yeah, yeah. Oh, the draft is brilliant. Don't get the export. It's all strong, that's why you stick to the cans. So how much is a can? I can see why. I can see why everyone's drinking cans for 2 50 I'm a life, mate, look. That's your lifeline, your six pack? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm just saying how nice that pub is and Nathan says you want to go back at 11 o'clock at night, not 11 in the morning, you'll have a different opinion. What's Crewman. life like in Ebu Vale? Cruel, cruel. Cruel, really cruel. Why, why do you say that? No support for the local people. No. And billions gone abroad in corrupt, corrupt politicians. And we got nothing. And we made the fucking money. Yeah. And the taxation is all gone abroad to these fancy criminal fucking Tories. What about employment opportunities now that the steel none, works none has gone? Ever. Nothing. So you think the Welsh people have been mistreated? Oh, disgusting. I've found out that you used to work in the steelworks. Yes, I started yeah. as a 16 year old, 15, gone over 16. Yeah. And I've been there 40 years now. Okay. Well, when I retired. When you retired? 20 years ago. Was that just uh, before it closed? Um, Right nearly on the mark, yes. Yep. Just before it all finished. Yeah. My first job, I was starting in the mines. Uh, my friend got me a, a job in the mines because you, you could go anywhere then because there's so much work about. So I was going to start the work on a Monday and my f other friend got me an apprenticeship in, in the works. So I decided instead of going down the pit, because my, my dad didn't want me to go sort of thing, yeah. I'd go into the works instead. So I started down there uh, in the labour pool and I, uh, well, I stayed there all my life. I worked myself up to be a packer. Yep. And I had a bit of an illness and they put me in the office. Yep. And uh, I had a good life, really. Brought my family up on the works, anyway. Yep. Yep. Yeah. And what, what was life in general like when the steelworks were open, were open in the town? In the town, the town was thriving. Everybody had worked. There, there was no unemployment. Everybody who left school always tended to have a job. There was yes. a job for everyone? A job for everyone. And what effect did it have um, on the community when the still works closed? Oh gosh, well, people had to go out of, out of town to look for work, obviously, yep. because there weren't enough in the area. Though there was a lot of industries up to Vanabak and other places taking on a lot of people. Um, a lot of the youngsters then went on the door and they, they were suffering, I think. Yeah, yeah. Suffering quite a lot. And, yeah. and what is life like these days in Ebu Vale? It's... Uh, Compared to, to the, the heydays when the steelworks were open? Well, 
there's a lot less work, which is obvious. A lot of people haven't got money. The kids don't know what to do with themselves. If they don't go out of the town, there's no work here for them. For my children, what are they going to grow up into? My grandchildren and my great-grandchildren. Yeah. What they, there's nothing here for them. See, so they, 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 they have, have to move away if they, they want to prosperity. Move for work if, they, yeah. if they want to have a good living. Yeah. Because they're only minor jobs here now. And they've got to work harder, I think, if they get them. And a lot of the youngsters now don't want to work, right? They're not like they was, like. Yeah. Because there's nothing about, they all go hunt in for it, sort of thing. Yeah, yeah. And, but we were lucky enough, we didn't have to hunt for it because it was there for us. Yeah. You know, when yeah. I was growing up. Yeah. So, so how, how do you feel about how things have changed? Um, sad for the younger people in the area. Uh, it, it got to be frustrating for them not to have work, to know they've got to move away to get work. It's, it's still my Neverville is quite a good community, mine. Yeah, I was it's, going to ask you, what's the, the sense of community yeah, like? There's, in here now, I can go and sit on any table and know everybody. Yeah, it's a very people, welcoming place. All, all yeah. these people, all good people here. And I know most of them come in here because they've been coming here most of my life since they was able to drink whatever. And they the people and you still got the friendship and, and the camaraderie as we had years ago yeah. but it's not so like that for the youngsters I'm grateful of the work I've had and like I said I brought my family up and, it, and, and I'm lucky enough to have a nice family good family like, yeah. around me but uh, still I, if I was young growing up in the same environment now I wouldn't be so I don't think so happy about it yeah. because there's nothing about to give him that security. So this is your hometown, Dale? This is my hometown, where I currently live. It's called Brimmow Town. Brimmow Town. And this is King Street. I mean, I can see a lot of closed yeah, stores. Yeah, close. So is there, what, what's the like employment situation like the in the town? The situation is um, shops, uh, businesses open within, within weeks, they close. Yeah. Unfortunately, due to uh, deprivation and poverty. I mean, some businesses do make it, you know, especially the pubs and you've got a few hair salons on here who make it as well. I mean it's good that the pubs are doing well but yeah. a community can't survive on that alone. No they can't. No. No. What's no. life like in this town? Crap. Why do you? New. Why? Nothing like for young people not yeah. a lot of opportunity. And then people whinge them when they're playing up on the streets but there's nothing to do. Yeah, lack of employment opportunities. Mm. And Best thing about it is a sunbed shop. <laughs> Get yourself to a sunbed That's shop. <laughs> so you can see there folks but I think it depends on the age of the person you speak to when you come to these small valley towns. The older people, possibly retired, earned their money before the steel works and the mines closed. But the younger people, hardly any opportunity for gainful employment. So, not a great place for them to live. This is uh, one of the flats my friend used to stay in here. Um, he was paying £550 per calendar month and the flats are actually falling apart. There's damp everywhere. One and bedroom like, flat, you say? One bedroom flat, mate. They're like prison cells. Yeah. Damp everywhere. Um, you don't come in to repair them. Um, it's just ridiculous in a time like this. You yeah, know? 550 quid a month in a town where there's not a lot of employment opportunity. How can people be expected to survive and have a prosperous life? What's life like in Brimmer these days? Why do, you, why do you say that? Why do you say it's like that? Because it is. Yeah. Lack of opportunities, yeah. not a lot going on. Yeah. <laughs> okay, That's the only thing we do is get pissed. There you go, you heard it from the locals, folks. There's not much to do in this town apart from get pissed. So you can see why the pubs are thriving and not much else is. Look at this, Wales' oldest cinema. And what an art deco delight it is. It's had multiple um, facades since yeah. 1894. So it's been added on to, so the original building was 1894 and then it's been added on to new facades at one point in the 60s, 70s it had a lovely galvanised steel and it's just changed. Obviously it didn't look like this when we took it over. What a treasure. We had little, little old seats with tiny amount of leg room. Yeah. So everybody sat with their legs over the seat in front. Yeah. Originally this would have been 1,200 seats, would have extended out into the market hall next door. There are many Weatherspoons pubs that have taken over picture houses, so I think it's wonderful that you're doing this here yeah. with this, you know, historic, wonderful institution 
and it hasn't become a Buddy Weatherspoons or no, yeah. something like no. a Bingo Hall or something. Yeah. Look at that. Wow. Bang on. On the 21st of October 1966, here in the village of Aberfan, near Merthyr Tydfil, heavy rainfall unexpectedly caused a colliery spoil tip from the hill above to slide down the hill and engulf the village primary school, which lay on the grounds of what is now this memorial garden. 116 children and 28 adults lost their lives in a terrible, awful incident, which is known as the Aberfan disaster. And the reason I've brought you here at the end of the video is because I wanted to pay my respects to the people that have lost their lives, but also because I think we should acknowledge the sacrifice that these valley communities have made in order to help forge the industry that helped to grow the British nation. And even though that industry isn't required of these communities anymore, we should all be thankful and grateful to the sacrifice in these often dangerous jobs that these people, these communities made. So in this beautiful setting where such a terrible thing happened, I think it's really important that we acknowledge these wonderful communities of the South Wales Valleys. Thanks for watching, folks.